Yeah, Harry's coming to us from South West England. Um, so I appreciate you accommodating the time difference today. Yeah, sure. No worries. I mean, yeah, it's the end of my day. So it's a lovely uh, cap to end us off. Nice. Nice. I love that mic you're using. What are you using right there? Uh, this is, um, wow, uh, I really should know because that's the name of the brand I always forget. Uh, Electro Voice. It's an RE20. I know it's an RE20, but the brand I always forget because it's less. It's the lesser famous brand than uh, than Shaw. A lot of the podcasters you'll see will use a Shaw SM7B, but this is the RE20 classic radio radio mic, basically. Yeah. If what I like about it is the style. It looks super cool. It looks like the mic emoji. <laughs> kind of right. Yeah. It's got a bit right. of a retro vibe to it, uh, like and a retro it. sound too. If you want to really nerd out on the audio side of things, but yeah, that is cool. I like it. Cool. All right. Well, for the people taking notes, my team taking notes on this episode, please note that and link to it in the podcast notes. That would be awesome. Okay. So first of all, let's tell us a bit about your journey into podcasting, Harry. And and do you have a podcast yourself? What got you interested in in, in podcasting? Yeah. Well, so my background's in audio. I went to school for um, music technology and audio. Um, after graduating, I went and worked in post-production in a studio in London. We were kind of doing big TV ad campaigns, basically, for for kind of um, big brands here in the UK. Um, and, and I did that for a while, um, but I quickly learned that that was just like a miserable life and I didn't want to do that anymore. Uh, kind of the traditional agency life was kind of not for me anyway. Um, so I, I, I left that and, um, and then wound up getting into kind of sales and marketing because I was like, I was like, what am I going to, th I thought this was what I was going to do in my life. Now, what am I going to do with my life? So I went and became a sales guy because I guess that's what you do. <laughs> and uh and it was basically throughout the the intervening years there, I was doing that for kind of like seven years, um, traveling, working in lots of different places around the world and knowing all the time I wanted to run my own business. So I spent all of that time educating myself by listening to podcasts. Um, and you could argue that it took a little while too long for the light bulb to, to go off. But eventually uh, something clicked. And I realized actually maybe there's something in this. I'm, I'm using podcasts to learn and figure out how I'm going to navigate the world of business. Um, there's probably something I have to offer here as well. So it was, uh, yeah, kind of end of 2016. I set out to to create a podcast agency um, to to kind of uh, help brands tell stories in audio. And I realized, like, um, yeah, the, uh, to answer your question, I do not have a podcast currently. We've we've run a couple um, internally at Lower Street. Um, the most uh, kind of successful one was um, uh, WFH. Uh, or at the beginning of the pandemic, we decided to. Uh, to start a daily um, remote working podcast to, to kind of help ourselves and the folks around us kind of navigate um, remote work because we've been remote since the beginning. So we figured we had something to kind of add there. Um, but aside, aside from that, it's a classic cobbler's, cobbler's shoes kind of situation. We, we're too busy making podcasts for other people to, uh, to make one of our own. So we don't have one uh, right now, but we are secretly working on something behind the scenes. So who knows? It's Watch funny this how that it's funny how that works out, right? Like even for us, I mean, a big piece to our company is SEO optimization. Yep. And it's like, and that's one piece, even on our own website, we're not focused entirely on building the SEO portion of our website because we're to, so busy doing client work. Other things always take priority, but yep. sometimes it's good to carve in some time for yourself and some self-love, right? Definitely. Couldn't agree more. It'll, it'll, it'll happen. It'll happen. This is the year. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, let's, let's hear it from you then in terms of some of those key benefits for a business needing to start a podcast. Yeah. So I'm, and I think that's a really good word to start with. Do we need to start a podcast? I think, um, it's really important to think about where we're at as a business and what we're trying to achieve, what our goals are. I think that's a lot of the conversations we have is, is not just how do you make a podcast, but do you need one at all? Um, I think there's some things that podcasting is really, really good at. Um, and I think there's some things that podcasting is not good at, right? Like it's not a, uh, it's not a quick win. Like if you're a, a small agency and what you need today is sales, like podcasting might not be it for you um, because you'll know yourself after however many hundreds of episodes you guys have released here on the Merge podcast, but it takes a while to grow that audience, right? Like it takes time and dedication of consistently publishing content to really build an audience of, of kind of a meaningful size. And so I think if we think about podcasting as, um, you know, as a way to just immediately get leads from our audience, it's probably not the best fit. Um, what podcasting is amazing at is that it is um, 
you know, the buzzwords that get thrown around in, in podcasting are words like authenticity and intimacy. And, and it definitely is that, right? Like it's a very private thing. You listen on headphones, you listen while you're walking the dog or driving the car or whatever. It's an amazing way to make a really kind of one-to-one -one connection with your audience at scale. Um, and I think the power that we, that you get from that, the relationship you get to build over time is an incredibly strong one. So I think in terms of, yeah, building meaningful relationships with prospects, with clients, um, over a long period of time, it's a really fantastic tool. Um, but I think, you know, for our conversation here, one of the ways that I think podcasting is the most powerful, um, for, for entrepreneurs, agency owners, and so on, I think we can use it as a platform and I'd love to hear your story with this. I don't know if this is something that you've done with the Merge podcast. We use it as a platform to uh, to generate leads for our for our business. So I said it's not a good for like, you know, quick sales and it's not. But I think from like a networking and account based marketing play, podcasting is amazing. If we kind of invite onto our show ideal fit clients that we want to work with, um, the the response rate we get from that and we 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 produce a bunch of shows in this exact vein um for for many of our clients if you reach out to someone and say hey can i buy you lunch or can i get your coffee or can i send you my sales deck i mean the answer is like no get in line with all the other people that have cold emailed me today mm -hmm. um but but if you say would you like to be a guest on my podcast uh, my audience would really kind of get a lot of value out of the the, the information you can share then that's a, a really a very different conversation to have um, and so it's a wonderful door opener and a wonderful opportunity to build not only a great piece of content for your for your audience and something that's going to take that, you know, that you can build in the long term and grow that audience over time. But in the short term, you also get to kind of network with with great fit clients. So I think that's one of the, the sort of strongest plays for, for podcasting. People don't think about that aspect of it. People just think, oh, I'm going to get a lot of people listening to my, my podcast. I get to choose the narrative. I can sell my product. But really... Yep. For us, the biggest ROI from the investment made from a time standpoint for a podcast is those one-on-one -on -one connections I make with the podcast guests, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's not a sales pitch. It is it's a down to earth conversation as if we're sitting at a bar, but it's very, it's a very easy point of entry to that conversation when you say, Hey, come join me on my podcast for a chat. Yep. Now, another byproduct is the fact that I selfishly get the benefit from a conversation from the subject matter expert and my whole entire audience gets to benefit from that conversation as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's another benefit. A third benefit, which has been huge and you don't, it, it's very, it's kind of intangible because you don't really see this, but you know, you have people listening to your podcast, even if you have an audience of 10 people listening, you know, one of those 10 people could become a client six months down the road. And their right. point of entry into understanding you, your product, your personal brand was that conversation that they listened to on your podcast. And now they become a member of your ecosystem. Yep. Right. And if everything's set up correctly and you have pixels to people that are visiting your podcast pages so you can retarget them with ads, there are so many benefits to having it. But it's intangible. You don't just see the results right away. That's right. Exactly. So like to, to the point I made at the very beginning, I think the podcast the merge podcast would never have lasted as long as it was it has if you had started it from day one of launching your company i'm sure it would have been very hard to kind of justify the time and investment in creating that because it the the, the timeline from which that has kind of returned value to you i would imagine is is longer than other things like you know all the things you do for your clients Definitely, hundred percent so you know going on talk we talked about some of the key benefits obviously um now, how do you? How would you define what a profitable podcast is? What What does that mean to somebody thinking about starting a podcast? How can they? What are the metrics they're looking at? In your in what What is your What is your suggestion on that? What do people need to look at to see whether a podcast is profitable? Yeah, so I mean, we get approached a lot by people who want to start a podcast or have a podcast already, and they're really keen to monetize it directly through through ads and sponsorships. Um, and I think it's it's important to say right from the get go, like that's something that we kind of advise really strongly against uh, in almost all cases and the reason for almost all cases in our situation is that the the people we work with are typically brands right we're working with with companies to create their shows so they're thinking okay how can i make a piece of marketing that is then either profitable or, or cost neutral at least um uh but that's not generally the best approach um because effectively what you're doing is watering down your message you're kind of sharing that stage that you've created with sponsors and for frankly like limited amounts of return in terms of cash like 
you know, the numbers we need to hit to really get meaningful revenue are sort of in the tens of thousands of listeners per episode. And we've got many, many clients who have significantly smaller audiences than that, but are very, very happy with the return on the investment that they're getting because of the people that are choosing to listen. So I guess the first thing to say is return on investment or, or a profitable podcast is probably not one that is sponsored. If you are a creator and you want to go down that route, good on you um it's a lot of work and uh and i think it's getting harder as the space becomes um you know more competitive um so i might start with with email with writing with youtube and then move over to podcasting later when you've already got an audience because of that time it takes to build build the audience um but in terms of what a profitable podcast is for everybody else again the brands that we tend to work with um, that is uh, kind of, it's a different story for everybody. So some folks really what they care about is, like I said, the relationships with their clients. They want to increase lifetime value of the clients they're working with. They want to educate their, the, the users of their product or whatever that might be. They want to build those relationships and make, you know, real turn their users into huge raving fans and advocates for their, for their brand. For other folks, it might be kind of just simply thought leadership. They want to put content out there that positions their brand as a real expert in their field. Um, and they can create that content, obviously, in audio and then repurpose it on a bunch of different channels. Um, other folks might be looking to simply network. So we've talked about kind of invi inviting ideal prospects onto the podcast. But, you know, other folks are looking to network within their industry and sort of, you know, build their notoriety within their space and legitimacy of their brand within that ecosystem. Um, there is a ton of different ways that, you know, a brand can get ROI from podcasting. So I think that's why it's super important to think about not just hey, this is this super shiny, cool thing. I want to do a podcast because my competitors are and it looks super fun. And it is. <laughs> Obviously, I'm biased, but I think podcasting is a really fun thing to do with your time. Uh, but but we need a better reason for that. We need to know re truly why we're doing it and what we want to see as the results out the other end. And then we can kind of optimize what we're making to make sure it delivers on that. Okay. We have really, answered the question. 100%. We've hit the why. People now understand why they need to have the podcast. Next question is the how, because, mm -hmm. you know, what comes first? Is it, is it the, the concept, the title? Uh, is it the audience? How does a new podcaster decipher where to start that journey into podcasting? For sure. You, well, you've nailed it with the last one there. The audience is 100% the place to start. So I think one of the mistakes we see so many brands make when they start a podcast is they go, great, our competitors have a show. We really want a podcast. Um, what does theirs look like? It's an interview show. We'll just make an interview show. We're gonna, uh, we've are gonna. we got some amazing um, expertise in-house. We're going to interview some other people in our industry that are also experts. They'll have a conversation. We'll put it up on the internet and hey, presto, it's going to be awesome. Sadly, that's rarely the case. I think uh, oftentimes it's incredibly hard to make that into a compelling listen. Um, and you know what we're dealing with right now is our com competition when we create a podcast is not just our competitors, the other podcasts in our space, but we're also competing with, I don't know, Joe Rogan, with Lex Friedman, with, you know, uh, anyone that you could care to mention. That's who they could be spending their commute time listening to in, a, in the form of a podcast. So we have to really think carefully about who are we trying to reach? What do they want? What are they already listening to? What do they care about? What can we provide them that they're not getting elsewhere? And how can we create a show that is dedicated to them rather than thinking about what do we want to make and then putting that out there and hoping we can find an audience. You know, what we find is that we, we're like, we've made this show and then we have to just basically go knocking on everybody's door. Go, we made this thing. It's great. Do you want to listen? And the answer is usually like, I, I've got like seven other shows I listen to already. Like I'm, I'm busy. I'm taken. My time is, mm. is, is taken. So instead what we need to go is like, what do you need? Let me make that for you and put it out there. Um, much more kind of uh, effective approach to it. So yeah, starting with the listener. Is, uh, is definitely the way to go. How important is uh, the length of time of a podcast uh, when you decide to create that format for each episode? Mm -hmm. So how long should episodes be? Yeah, how long, how long, long should episodes be? I think what's, what's probably more important is the consistency of it, mm -hmm. right? But in your opinion, what do you think is, is the optimal length of a podcast episode? Like you have your Joe Rogan's, which are three hours long. Right. And you have your little short five minute episodes as well, which can be daily podcasts. Right. Yep. So what's your thoughts on that? I, I think it's a, a blend of two things. Firstly, or, or three things. The first one is um, the, the, the correct answer is a podcast should be as long as it needs to be and not a minute longer. Right. Like if you're you, you, our job is not to fill space, our, our job is to provide value and that takes as long as it takes. And so mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we, we, we do that. Um, 
the other thing is, again, back to the audience, what do they want? Like, it's unlikely that the target audience that we have, you know, as brands that are trying to advertise to other buyers um, from other brands, um, it's unlikely that what they need in their life is another three hour Joe Rogan marathon, right? So probably what they're looking for is, 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 a, is value in a concise and enjoyable, entertaining way. So I think usually less is more. Um, but, but also the other point to answer is like, how much time do you have to dig dedicate to this? Right? Like if you, you know, if you decide that Dan Carlin's hardcore history is the thing that you absolutely need to Im imitate for your, for your brand, um, Dan Carlin, by the way, yeah, creates a podcast called hardcore history. Every episode is hours and hours and hours long. Um, phenomenal, incredibly popular, but again, that's a lot of work to produce that show. Um, uh, so you have to think about what's realistic for you to be able to do every week or every two weeks um, that you can you can consistent, consistently deliver. So I think there's no one right answer. It's really, again, about an obsession about your listener. What, what do they need and how can you provide that? But also what can you realistically do on a weekly basis? When people ask me what the most challenging aspect of, of running a podcast is, it's, uh, it's been consistency. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I fortunately, we've been running an episode every single week since February 2020. Never missed a week. There have mm -hmm. been a few weeks where uh, I've been on the phone with people a day before the next episode is supposed to be launched and <laughs> finally, and got a guest. Right. But we may, we learned from that mistake. And now we book guests weeks in advance now to avoid that issue. Awesome. Um, but would you agree with that? The most difficult part of running a podcast is the consistency because it, like you said to your point it gets hot you, you know you get super excited about it for those first 10 episodes but then you right. don't get the listeners you had had anticipated and yep. so it dies off totally it's uh it is definitely one of the challenges i think um I mean, it's important to mention that not every show has to be week in, week out forever. Like we work with a lot of clients that do like a season. They say, OK, mm -hmm. we've got, you know, this budget, this quarter, this year, this this six months, whatever that might be. We want to make a show. This is not something we want to necessarily commit to forever. We just want to make really high quality content. And we let's say we were going to make 10 episodes, 12 episodes. I think that's a really valid play as well, because you can say, OK, in this season, we're going to really dive deep on this specific topic or there's this kind of theme that kind of, um, you know, brings all of these episodes together and makes it like a package worth worth listening to. Um, and I think creating those kind of really binge worthy seasons, there's a lot of value in that as well. So not necessarily, um, you know, signing up yourself up to a podcast doesn't necessarily mean signing yourself up to like, OK, I'm, I'm in this now every week for the rest of my life. Um so, uh, so yes, I think, but, you know, if you do say, I want to make a, a weekly show, uh, particularly if you're doing that kind of, um, that kind of sales approach where you're trying to get your prospects onto the podcast, like that consistency is going to be really important because the volume of conversations you have will equate to the volume of kind of deals you could, you're able to generate. Uh, but I, honestly, I think the biggest challenge for most podcasters now is creating something that's truly exceptional because I think what we have you know, I'm sure when you launched this podcast, we were probably in the position where we were around about half a million podcasts that existed in the world. And I think now we're somewhere around four million. Like there's a lot of a lot of podcasts out there. It pales in comparison, by the way, to the number of YouTube channels. So we're good. Like don't stress about it. It's not a problem. But what it does mean is there's no shortage of choice. Like as a B2B listener, as a I'm, I, let's say I'm a CMO of a company and I'm looking for my next podcast to listen to, there is no shortage of choice for me to find the content that I want to learn from. So what we need to do as marketers, as brands, is create something that is actually genuinely differentiated and frankly, like high quality, um, because I think gone are the days where we can just switch on a mic, chat to someone smart for 30 minutes and hope that good stuff comes out of it. Uh, I think it's now like for, again, let folks that have been doing this for a long time, you've got that audience and you've kind of that's an amazing thing but if you're starting from scratch today you've got to really think about like how you're going to stand apart from what's already out there what's that mean by high quality so high quality across the board i think um i've got a real bee in my bonnet around uh around noteworthiness my my whole thing is like i i i believe that the only way we as marketers can really uh, hope to succeed is by doing something that's genuinely worthy of note. I think if we all lean into creating a million AI, uh, AI generated blog posts, we're just going to get lost in a sea of mess of noise of, of medio mediocrity. Um, and I think that there are outsized 
outsized rewards for the folks that really decide to do less but to a really high standard because you're going to be that tall poppy. You're going to be able to stand up and go, this is actually worth paying attention to. I'm not going to do a, a podcast that is every single week for the rest of time. I'm going to do 12 episodes and they're going to be the best 12 episodes in my industry on my topic for this specific audience. Um, right. Yeah. That's, that's uh, something I, I, I that. believe. Quality over quantity, right? That's, that's right. That's, that's good. it's not a, it's not a new idea, but I think, uh, I think in the, in the kind of frenzy of, of, of a kind of hot new thing like podcasting, everyone wants to jump on and do the thing. And I think it's, it's, it's very easy to jump on and do the minimum viable podcast rather than really commit to it. You know, it's, you know, we say it's, it is cliche quantity over uh, quality over quantity, but what it really is doing is you're valuing people's time, right? That's it's it's people's time. And you don't want to put out a piece of junk that they have to try to even devote five minutes to let alone the 25 minute podcast episode. Right. So Um, and, and, you know, we learn this, you know, ourselves as well. Like, we'll if we have a guest on that has really poor quality, uh, poor quality, Mike, mm-hmm. even just, you know, it, it's poor quality content. It's a, it's a 20 minute sales pitch. Yep. We just won't publish that episode. That's right. It. It's not going to do any, it's going to do us a disservice by publishing exactly. that episode. Right. Yep. So, um, before we, we go, I do want to touch on the post production process. What happens to that piece, uh, or that podcast content? to get the most exposure possible for it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, that's, that's the, the burning question for every podcaster out there, I think, is how do I get more listeners? Um, and, and I, I want to say uh, the, 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 the first and best answer is take your medicine. Nobody wants to hear it, but just make focus on the craft. Because again, you can't grow, you can't polish a turd, as we say in the UK. And, uh, and, and, um, and so I think really focusing on making the best show you possibly can is so important. Everyone thinks they've got a great show. They just need more listeners. But I would question that, you know, even if you are Joe Rogan, I would question it. Like, how can you make that better? And then think about the growth. So that's the first thing. We've got that out of the way. That's the thing that no one wanted to hear, but I had to say it. Now we can talk about the fun stuff. Uh, I think video is is super, super important. Um, I think that what we, what we have now is... Um, we have to make sure that our podcasts are discoverable. And if you go to Apple Podcasts or you go to Spotify, finding new content is pretty hard, especially if we're talking about niche shows that are outside of the kind of, you know, the big the big networks that are pushing out the huge shows. So I think what we have to um, think about is where are the channels where people are really discovering new content? And I think, you know, one of those is in YouTube. It's the second biggest search engine in the world, as we all know. Um, and I think if we can give our audience bite-sized tastes of our content, and I think that's something that you guys do uh, really well here is you take the live stream and you turn that into short form pieces of content that people can can sample the show, right? Like, because I think one of the things that we've seen is that folks thought, hey, I'm just going to run Facebook ads, Instagram ads. They work for everything else in my business. I'm just going to chuck a bunch of money at that, point it towards my podcast feed and hey, Presto, we'll have new listeners. But I think what, people have found over trying this and we've tried it every which way is that getting someone to move from the casual like scrolling through their instagram feed like just looking to double tap the like button to then going okay i'm gonna now spend 30 40 50 minutes of my time listening to an in-depth piece of content that's a really big leap to make like you're not in that mode when you're in social media mode so like throwing a bunch of money on that audience you're just you're not gonna get people that stick so what we need to do is give people the opportunity to sample our content in the places they're already hanging out so that when they do, when they are in that mode of like, okay, now I need a podcast to listen to, you are going to come to mind. So I think um, video content, super important, short form, bite-sized stuff, vertical video, YouTube shorts, TikTok, et cetera. Um, but I think the other one is is um, working with other podcasters. So cross-promoting your show with other similar audiences that that don't compete with you. Um the, the, the number one way that people discover new podcasts is by recommendation from friends and family. The second way is by recommendations they hear on other podcasts. So whatever you can do to get in front of other relevant podcast audiences as a guest, as a sponsor, as a cross promotion, where you kind of do like a channel takeover or episode drop, as we say in podcasting, where you kind of exchange an episode of each other's shows and put it in each other's feeds. Uh, these are the best ways, I think, to, to, to grow a show. But it's a long road. You've got to be committed to the to the game as, as you have been i love it i love it harry this has been great if our audience has any questions for you what's the best way for them to get in touch 
Uh, I hang out on Twitter a lot. I'm at Podcast Harry. Um, but everything that we do is at LowerStreet.co. Awesome. And is there any other social media platforms? Are you on the Instagrams? Are you on uh, Facebook and stuff? Instagram, Facebook, not so much. We do. We hang out on LinkedIn, and I personally hang out on Twitter. So yeah, you can find us Lower cool. Street on on LinkedIn um, for all that businessy chat. Um, everything else is uh, is probably the website and Twitter. Awesome, Harry. We end every episode with the same question. That question is this: If you could choose one person, dead or alive, to represent your brand, who would it be, and why? Oh crap! I should have. Um... Uh, dead or alive to represent my brand, who would it be? I think, um, oh, holy smokes, this is terrible. Uh, an excellent storyteller of some sort, let's say Stephen Fry. He's a wonderful British voice that uh, I think represents our, our roots in Britain. We're, we're a global team, but um, we're, we're made in the UK, and he's an exceptional storyteller, and that's what we're all about. So, I'll go with Stephen Fry. Awesome, love it. Thanks again, Harry. Appreciate your time, likewise. Thanks for having me.